Hello, I'm Anthony Todd and today I'm going to talk about trigonometry and physics and how we use it in the typical general physics classroom in the AP physics classroom. So the first thing we need to understand is what is trig? Well trigonometry is just using a variety of triangles to find angles or vector components or a lot of useful things that we use in mathematics, uh, STEM, education, and even in the real world construction and stuff like that. Now the basic thing that everybody does, this is the first example, is everybody kind of knows how to use trig already. And that is with what we call the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, this is side A, side B, and side C. This is actually a lesson on trig, because trig actually deals with, guess what? Triangles, okay? And since this is our typical uh, triangle here, our right triangle, we actually use Pythagorean Theorem to solve for any given side. If, um, example, if you know two sides, of a triangle you can find the other one and that's simply with a squared plus b squared equals c squared okay so that's one example of trig and how we can do that now we can use this for um, displacement um, or even our 1d motion uh, example problems the next thing we do is whenever we get to vector components and this is when we deal with the right triangle again now I haven't found out that a lot of students understand a little bit of trig or they've seen it but they don't really understand the whole right triangle and how it can be applied other than the typical Pythagorean theorem. Now please note the sum of all your angles on any triangle must equal 180 degrees okay and that's typical of everything so this is angle one, angle two, this is angle three you know angle one plus angle two, plus angle three, must equal 180 degrees, okay? Now, what we're gonna do today is look at Sokotoa and Trig a little more advanced. All right, so in order to do this, let's say we have this angle here, we have to know the sides of the triangle. Now the side directly adjacent to this angle is called the adjacent side. The side that is directly opposite, well we call that the opposite side and this is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the long side of your right triangle, okay? Now a lot of students also forget this fact as well. The opposite and adjacent side may change depending upon the problem or what angle you have. So let's say I give my students this angle here. Well, this is still my hypotenuse, it's still the longest side of the triangle, but now this is now my adjacent side and this is now my opposite side. Okay, now how we use this in physics is with this typical term. I think almost everybody's heard of it. So, ka toa. So, so ka toa. So, so ka toa. So, example, sine is opposite over adjacent. So, maybe you've heard of this and not really understood what it meant, or sometimes teachers. Um, this is not necessarily taught on all the end of course exams, but maybe just mentioned. So they'll kind of teach this, but kind of go over it really fast. And that's okay. We're under a lot of pressure here. And what this actually means is, is it's talking about the sides of the triangle. So whenever you see opposite over hypotenuse, we know that's dealing with sine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So what this means is, with a known angle, and if you know one side of a triangle, a right triangle, you can find the other side if you would wish. Also, if you know one side of the triangle, um, and you know an angle, you can find the other. Or, heck, if you know two sides of the triangle, so it could be anyway, opposite, adjacent, or, or um, hypotenuse, if you know two of those, you can find the actual angle at any given point. So this is a really, really useful tool for us in physics. Now in physics, for the most part, we actually use this with vectors. So in physics, we use this with vectors. Now an example I always like to use is for um, projectile motion. If we draw an object being shot of a cannon like such, um, we know, I'm going to try to draw it right here, this is the ground. We know that any given moment, a projectile has three vector components to it. This V right here 
is what we call the instantaneous velocity. Now notice it's going to change as time progresses. And it might look something like this, and then it might look something like this. So that velocity is always changing. But also note there are different components of it. In projectile motion we always know there's a velocity in the x direction as well. Now fun fact, since the acceleration in the x direction is zero, because we are dealing with a perfect world. So perfect world problems, that means this vector in the x direction always remains constant. So it's never changing. And that's a fun fact to remember. So another thing with vectors is, even though it's not really, it's there, but it's been being hidden by the instantaneous velocity vector, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not there. It's just, um, it's kind of combining with the other one, okay? And so as well with the velocity initial in the y direction. And we also have the v naught y. This is the velocity initial in the y direction. Now, in the y direction, so now that's the x, in the y direction we are experiencing gravity. So this object is obviously going to accelerate downward. So that means our velocity vector in the y direction will slowly get smaller, go to zero, and then right here it will invert when the object's on its way back down. So we can see how we have three different components at any given point, okay? Now, how we find these is very important, okay? So I've kind of made some example problems, okay? So how we're going to find these is with using the trig that we learned before, okay? Now, how we're going to apply this is very simple. Whenever you do a kinematics problem, especially a 2D kinematics, remember 2D just means um, two directions. And typically we're dealing with the X and Y direction. So it's horizontal and vertical, so side to side and up and down. We need to know these vectors here. So example, I drew a problem where this object is being shot out of a cannon or uh, it could be a cannon of some sort, like such. It's being shot out of a cannon at 50 meters per second at 15 degrees, okay? What is this velocity initial in the x direction and what is its initial velocity in the y direction? These are very important things to find out and remember when we are dealing with projectile motion. Um, heck, this, this can also be applied to, you know, force vectors. So remember, this can be applied to almost anything. Applied to any vector any vector. So it could be force, momentum, anything of that nature, but for this example I'm just going to use um, velocity. So we see v naught in the x and v naught in the y. Now as we see here we actually have a right triangle here. And it's kind of hard to see so I'm going to kind of pull it out. That's what I do for my students. So this velocity is my velocity vector, instantaneous velocity. This bottom vector, I'm to use a different color, is my velocity in the x as we see right here. And this was the hard one to see. Now just because this side is my y, that means with using some geometry here that this side over here also has to be equal to my velocity in the y direction. And there it is. There is our right triangle. So if we have this angle here, the v naught y is now my opposite and the vx is now my adjacent and this v is my hypotenuse. So how we solve for these is just using our trig functions of SOHCAHTOA. So watch. If I want to solve for this V-naught, and traditionally in physics, the, the hypotenuse is traditionally always known. I have my hypotenuse and I have my adjacent side. Well, what trig function uses that? Well, guess what? That is cosine. Cosine of theta. And that is given like such. See, adjacent and hypotenuse. All right. If I want to find my sine, well, or my v naught y, that is opposite over hypotenuse, so that will be sine of theta. And that's pretty cool. And how I did that, I kind of skipped some steps. Let's say if I wanted to solve for that, um, let's say I do this. I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so so ka ka. If I, have, if I know this angle here, my adjacent side is my v naught x, and my hypotenuse is just v, thus solving for v naught x would be v 
cosine of theta. And that's how we get these right here. So example, if you understood this, that's fine. And this is actually how we got that. So this is kind of helped my students a little bit more. So now that we know this, we can then figure it out. Now make sure your calculator is set to degrees. So calcs to degrees. And the reason being is this will not work if your calculator is in radians. If your calculator is in radians, it's a totally different part of the triangle that we are looking at. Okay, so example, you take your calculator out and we're going to type these in. Very simple. So for this problem, it's going to be V cosine of your angle. Well, my V in this case is 50, and I like to do this at the same time. Cosine and sine. Remember, there's the only thing different between these two. It's just the sine and cosine. So my students, um, they do them really close together, and it kind of helps out if they mess up. Reduces that. So we're going to do 50 cosine of 15, 50 sine of 15. All you type your calculator is 50 um, cosine of 15. I get approximately, that's 14.5 meters per second. And then 50 sine of 15. I get uh, approximately, you know, it's 12.9 meters per second. So, oops, I put 15 cosine. I flipped those around. Forgive me. That is 50 cosine of 15. That's 48. Forgive me, it's 48.3. Okay, so my V not X is 48.3, and my V not Y is 12.9 meters per second. Now, what's interesting is this actually tells me the exact value of how fast this projectile is moving in the X direction and how fast it's moving initially in the Y direction. And this makes sense. If you get angles that are anything, you know, example, if you were to take this angle and I were to make it bigger, example, I were to increase it, these are like yin and yang. If I were to increase the angle from 15 to, let's say, I don't know, 50, that means my X direction would drop and my Y direction would have to go up and vice versa. If I've lowered it than 15, that means the object is going to be going faster in the X direction Thus, the Y has to be lowered as well. So remember, they're like yin and yang. One goes up, the other one has to go down. All right. Another example of this and how we use uh, this is kind of like displacement, um, 1D kinematics. Let's say you got, I don't know, some sort of river. And you got a boat. And let's say you want to, you know how far you are from the riverbank to the middle and let's say you're you know 50 meters and all of a sudden this boat goes down the river and you want to figure out you know how far down the river it went and so you take your protractor out and you find where it's at on the horizon and you measure this angle right here and you find that angle to be I don't know let's say 40 degrees well how far down the river has this boat traveled that makes sense so pretty much what you have is this And this is for this, we're looking for this, I guess, displacement of the boat going down the river. So how far did it go? So remember, we're an observer right here. And we see a boat, like I said, going down the river. And we want to figure out how far down the river it actually is. So what is this displacement? Okay. So that's what we're going to look for. And we know that we are 50 meters from the center of the river. Okay. So the question is, how can we use trig to find this out? And this can be very, very important in physics um, for, you know, a displacement problem, 1D kinematics problem, anything. So what we need to do is we have our triangle. Now notice, I'm going to try to draw this out. We have our angle right here. This is 50, right triangle, and we're looking for this delta x. Well, notice this side is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent side. And this is my opposite side. So you ask yourself, what two sides of the triangle do I have? Well, I have my adjacent and I have my opposite. So I go with the Soka Toa. So I have my opposite and I have my adjacent. Well, guess what? There's only one trig function that has opposite and adjacent, and that's tangent. So the tan is opposite over adjacent. Now, how am I going to use this? Well, you just plug in your variables you found. 
tan of 50 equals the opposite, which is what I'm looking for, over my adjacent, which is 50 meters. So solving for delta x, that gives me 50 times tan of 50. And you just plug this into your calculator. So 50 uh, times tan of 50 gives me right at approximately 59.6 meters. So that is how far down the river the boat actually traveled. Okay, so you can apply this to numerous things. Okay, so I hope this video helped. And if it, if it did, please uh, hit me a su su uh, subscribe for more physics content like this and astronomy. Um, it's free. You can always unsubscribe if you'd like. And please check out my store if you're interested in any teaching resources. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.